What's up everybody, it's Priyan Joni. So today I'm gonna to be showing you the CDJ900 Nexus. But first, a word from our sponsor, Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. What's also awesome about Direct Music Service, if you're always on the road just like me, they have this awesome mobile app so that you can search your favorite tunes, put them on a wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. You can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJ yearly and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. The CDJ 900 Nexus is one of the longest, if not the longest CDJ that's been in production. In fact, it was introduced back in 2013. And it's a replacement for the older CDJ 900, which came out back in 2009. I'm gonna quickly run through some of the feature upgrades that happened moving from the 900 to the 900 Nexus. The first one being that the 900 Nexus has a full colored LCD screen. The previous model had the LED dot system that was more similar to the CDJ 1000 Mark III and is currently still featured in the CDJ 850. This one gives you the full LCD screen so now you can see the waveforms, you can browse through the playlist as well as be able to see the full menu right on the screen itself. The new model is called a Nexus, and the reason why is that it integrates better into the Nexus system. Now, all modern CDJs are able to connect together in a Pro DJ link, including the old CDJ 900. The added Nexus feature to it is the fact that you can also connect a computer with Rekordbox open in the Ethernet switch that the Pro DJ link is linked on and it will allow the CDJ 900 to access your full record box playlist when it's in export mode. Using that mode is a little different from using performance mode and having the CDJ 900 Nexuses in HID mode, which we'll talk about a little later. One major difference about the feature of being able to use export mode with record box is that unlike on the XDJ 1000 Mark II and the CDJ 2000 Nexus II, Export mode can only connect to the CDJ900 Nexus via the Pro DJ link with the Ethernet switch. So that means you have to use an Ethernet port, which most laptops today don't have, or use an Ethernet dongle to connect into the Ethernet switch. The newer CDJs just requires you to connect via a USB cable to access the Pro DJ link in the entire setup. So one USB cable in an XDJ1000 Mark II can access the entire setup. Now note that I said one XDJ1000 Mark II or even a CDJ2000 Nexus II, you only need one USB cable. And if you're using the CDJ900 Nexus system with an XDJ1000 Mark II, which I have here, if you connect your computer via USB, it will access all four CDJs, including the 900 Nexus. So the limitation on the 900 not being able to access the Pro DJ link via USB isn't lost if you do have a CDJ that does. In fact, right now I have one XDJ1000 Mark II connected as my Pro DJ link with export mode in Rekordbox that connects the entire system here. Along with the other Nexus features that was added back in 2013, it now has the beat sync, which is the sync button. A lot of DJs kind of find this controversial, but when you're playing with four CDJs and you need elements, especially when you're playing elements to sync up together and play together, that sync function becomes very important and it becomes a creative tool. You're no longer using the CDJs just to play music. You can use it to play individual elements or even stems in track. And the sync function will not be complete without the quantize feature, which allows to keep anything you do with the loops or even the hot cues if you're using it with software to always snap to beat. It helps keep you in time and on grid when you're performing a function. Below is a slip button, which allows you to retain the original playing song when you let go of whatever button or function you're using, including the jog wheel. So if I decide to play a track and not have slip mode on and I scratch it,
it scratches normally. It retains itself from where I left it when I scratched. But when I have slip mode on, So when slip mode is on, what happens after you manipulate the jog wheel is that it continues to play from the point where you press play as if you never scratched the jog wheel at all. It's cool for doing temporary scratch tricks without stopping the whole song from continuously playing. See, watch. And slip mode also affects the beat divide section. Now, something about the beat divide is that it is a feature that is unique to the CDJ900 series. It's something that you don't see on the CDJ2000s or the XDJ1000s, or even the CDJ850 and the smaller CDJs. I used to mistakenly think these were auto loop buttons, but no, they do something different. The auto loop buttons are what you see on the CDJ850 and that came from the CDJ 800 series. What this does is that it does sort of a loop roll and resets itself at every beat for as long as you have it on. And it'll do it in the duration of a three fourth beat, one third beat, one half beat, a quarter or an eighth. And instead of a continuous loop roll, it's one that resets itself at every single beat. So if you had a kick and a snare, and you were to do a half a beat, it would be kick, kick, snare, snare, and it will continue on at every new beat. So it's like this. Off, quarter. This feature of beat divide doing continuous loop rolls is similar to what I would say, sort of like the splice effect in Serato. Now, if you have slip mode on, beat divide behaves a little differently and it's more like a loop roll. So instead of automatically resetting itself at every beat, now it's gonna hold for as long as you hold one of the beat divide buttons down. So watch this. Now one thing about the beat divide section is that in HID mode, it behaves a little differently with different DJ software. In Rekordbox, it becomes auto loop buttons. In Serato, it becomes loop roll buttons. And in Tractor, it actually becomes hot cue buttons. But in a later video, I'll show you a way where we can do that using some of the old gear that we might have laying around. Especially if you're using a mixer like a six channel or a four channel mixer that doesn't have performance pads. If you're a two CDJ person, the best way to pair CDJ 900 Nexus is with a DJ MS9 because it has the performance pads on it. So you might be asking, why am I doing a demo of a CDJ that was released seven years ago? Well, one of the awesome things about the CDJ 900 Nexus is that it's been in production since 2013, and it's still a current model CDJ from Pioneer DJ. And the thing about the CDJ 900 Nexus specifically is that alternatively from the flagship model, CDJ 2000 Nexus 2, it is the HID mode powerhouse of a CDJ. For the longest time, it's the one non-flagship CDJ that you can buy with a full LCD screen that works with Rekordbox, of course, Tractor, and Serato. The HID mode capabilities can work with all major DJ software. The newer XDJ1000 Mark II was never supported by Serato, and it was only recently, earlier this year, that it was supported by Tractor, by Native Instruments, to play in HID mode in Tractor. So for the longest time, the affordable alternative for HID mode users, and still currently the affordable alternative for Serato users, it's the CDJ900 Nexus. Now I must mention that before the XDJ1000 Mark II, the original XDJ1000 was a Serato supported media player, but that's no longer available. And also the CDJ850 was supported by Serato DJ and as far back as Serato Scratch Live, but it doesn't have the full LCD screen. So basically if you're looking to get an affordable alternative to the flagship models to use in standalone, whether it's flash drive or export mode, I would consider the XDJ1000 Mark IIs. And that is because it has a full touch screen that gives you access to all eight hot cues, four at a time, just like the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, 
And also it has touchscreen capability for auto loops. The 900 Nexus doesn't have dedicated hotkey buttons. If you're a DJ who plays on Serato with CDJs at the club, and you want a personal setup that you can practice on that doesn't cost as much as the flagship models, the CDJ 900 Nexus would be your best choice. I will also say this, if you have an existing standalone setup, say with two CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s or two XDJ 1000 Mark 2s, it would be a cool thing to consider having the CDJ 900 Nexus because of the beat divide functions. And I would actually put them on the outside since they're the ones without the hot cues. The reason is, is because the beat divide gives you an element that you can add that you can't really do on the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 or XDJ 1000 Mark 2. While the beat divide can be a feature that might be overused, it sounds really good with vocals. All right, so one of the things I like to do with CDJs and using them in HID mode is actually paying attention to their performance, their jog wheel response, and basically the frame rate of the rotation indicator. And that's because different CDJs behave differently with different software. And while it's always gonna work best with Rekordbox because Pioneer also makes Rekordbox, their software and their hardware should work. It might not always be the case with other software. Sometimes the rotation indicator might have a lower frame rate or the jog wheel might have a little bit of latency. I remember back in the day when the CDJ2000 Nexus first came out and it took a really long time for Serato to do HID support for it for Scratch Live. And during the switch from Scratch Live to Serato DJ, using the 2000 Nexus with Serato DJ, there was a huge lag on the jog wheel and it took, I think it was five or six updates until that was addressed. So whenever you're using HID mode, what, no matter whether it's a CDJ or not, it's always good to double check that it works with the software. But once it starts working well with the software, it seems to stay the way it is. So if you have an older player that's worked well with Serato DJ back in the day, it should work well now, but it's still a good idea to check. All right, so let's try this out using Rekordbox. All right, feels responsive as expected, and the rotation indicator looks just as smooth as it does in standalone. Okay, now let's try it with Serato. All right, so the jog wheel is responsive with Serato, but I do notice that the frame rate is slightly lower than it does when you play in standalone. It's very, very subtle. I've seen it actually less than that before with another device, but this one, it's useful. You probably can't even see it in or notice it with this camera, but I do see it with my eyes. And I think for most people, they won't even notice that. And it's a really nitpicky thing because at the end of the day, it's just as effective as the full frame rate as you would in standalone. Okay, now let's try it with Tractor. Okay, so the thing I notice about Tractor is the visual display of the rotation indicator is slightly offset from the actual movement. Not sure if you can see that, but it just, when it's slightly offset, you kind of see the rotation indicator still moving forward before it reverses when you do a forward back. Probably can't pick that up on camera too, but there is a slight visual lag. I don't feel an audio lag there. It could be there, but I'm scratching just fine. Ah. 
It might be there because usually with a little bit of a lag, my boomerangs sound a little bit more pronounced. But if it's there, it's not stopping me from being able to scratch. But like I said, that's why it's always good to check with every software and each individual model to see if it works well or not. And also make sure your firmware is up to date. So yeah, these are the CDJ900 Nexus media players from Pioneer DJ. I'm gonna leave you guys with some product links from Zounds down below. And the reason why I'm leaving you with Zounds is because they have one of the best financing programs online for your purchases. I'm gonna be doing more content with the CDJ900 Nexus and the DJ MV10 in the coming few days. If you got any questions, comments, or anything to add that I haven't covered in this video, or any suggestions what you want me to do with the 900 Nexus or the DJ MV10 in the upcoming videos, please leave them in the comments section below. Would love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, learn anything new that I didn't cover in this video, or hear from you guys what you want me to try with the gear I have now before I send it back. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. Also, don't forget to add me on Instagram where you can get exclusive content that I don't cover here on YouTube or to see a sneak peek of my upcoming videos. All right, thanks for watching, take care and stay healthy.